2009, there were over 12,000 valley fever infections reported to the CDC. Since most infections are not diagnosed, the CDC model estimates reported cases are only 2% of overall infections in a given year. In 2009, over 600,000 valley fever infections were estimated in the U.S. Many of these people have severe symptoms that are being ignored by the medical community. Valley fever just doesn't have the same publicity as SARS, West Nile virus, and other bacterial or viral diseases, so doctors aren't trained to look for it. People go home after visiting the endemic areas, get sick, and their doctors often think another disease is the culprit. Cancer and bacterial pneumonia are some of the most frequent misdiagnoses of valley fever. Doctors often give the wrong drugs that cause more harm than good or put patients through needless surgeries, but even the correct valley fever treatments are often toxic and harmful. The flip side of this is that it doesn't always cause problems right away. If you ever lived in or passed through these areas, you may have this fungus in your body and not even know it yet. It could be dormant for decades and activate at any time like a ticking time bomb to wreak havoc. Hundreds of people die from valley fever every year. 65% of valley fever infections are contracted in Arizona. California is second, followed by Texas, Nevada, and New Mexico. Utah also has areas endemic to valley fever. So does northern Mexico and parts of Central and South America. Valley fever is a very serious health risk for all national and international travelers, as well as residents in these endemic states. People from coast to coast and around the world have this infection. The vast majority of these statistics and cases come from Arizona. Much of the record keeping is so minimal for California that it's not regarded as even close to representing the seriousness of the epidemic. Just like 2008, 2007, and almost every year before it, 2009 was the worst year of all time for valley fever infections. Strangely, the Council of State and Territorial Epidemiologists had new reporting rules for 2010. They dropped reporting of valley fever to the CDC as a nationally notifiable infectious disease. It's back for 2011, but you have to wonder, why ever allow a disease to drop off a nationally published list when it gets numbers like these? Make up your own mind on this one. There are some who say that valley fever is rare, or even a benign disease, but the medical research proves otherwise. We'll share it with you in upcoming videos in this educational video series.